I have reported for a while now that lithium is in structural deficit, meaning there is not enough supply to meet the increasing demand. Actually, I thought this would only happen around 2025, but these insane price spikes pretty much tell us all we need to know. And these prices are concerning. In 2021, battery production costs were reportedly around $132 per kilowatt hour. Lithium, by my calculation, made up around $10 of that cost. At today's spot price, the lithium hydroxide needed per kilowatt hour would cost around $58. So you can see the concern. Battery costs are going up, not down. So much for Wright's Law. Now these prices have gotten everyone worried. And we have Elon Musk tweeting that Tesla may have to get into the lithium mining business. Now most Tesla savvy investors will tell you that Twitter is basically Elon Musk's corporate memo. And when he mentions that Tesla may have to get into the mining business, well that is basically Elon telling Tesla employees to break out the hard hats and hobnail boots because we're going digging. I have actually theorized a couple of times now in previous videos that battery manufacturers will have to do this. So I think it is only a matter of time. And for a bit of speculative fun, I thought I would see if I can weigh up on Tesla's options. Now please folks, this is speculation, not investment advice. So what are Tesla's options? Well, I think we can narrow the range by looking at some key criteria. The obvious first guess is that they will finally develop their own mine. Tesla already has mining rights on a 10,000 acre piece of land in Nevada. Location not disclosed as far as I know. But we do know that lithium deposits in Nevada are clay deposits. And to date, nobody has succeeded in mining clay profitably. But Tesla is not nobody. And they have filed patents for lithium extraction from clay. But extraction is not the only problem. In fact, it is the least of their concerns. A much more daunting task is to get the relevant permits, meaning they have to first draw up a competent persons report, file an application, and then fight off the inevitable lawsuits from activists, lobbyists, special interest groups, and locals who suddenly start developing attachments to the land. This can take years, if not a decade. Just look at the battle that Lithium Americas are facing in court right now with their Thacker Pass project. Since Tesla is going to need lithium now, or at least within the next two years when their long-term supply contracts will start running out, I don't think mining clay at this stage is their primary strategy. So that leaves us having to choose between Hard Rock and Bryant's. Now Tesla have made two separate announcements for supply agreements for Spodamine, one from Piedmont Lithium and another from Liontown. This gives us a clue that Spodamine processing is on their radar. The next observation to make is that Tesla will almost certainly look for an American or Canadian supplier. Lithium is the new oil, and it is now a strategic asset for most countries. And what happens to strategic assets? Well, look what Indonesia did. All right, I know it's for nickel and iron ore, not lithium, but I'm trying to make a point. They banned export of raw material and demanded local processing. It gets even worse in Chile, where the mines are facing nationalization after the election of their new president, Gabriel Boric. Mining faces risks related to regime changes, mineral rights getting renegotiated all the time, new royalty schemes, local partner mandates, and so on. For this reason, I am certain that Tesla will look to purchase an American or Canadian mine. Maybe an Australian one. But Australia has a major drawback. And I sense a joke coming on here. It is far, far away. Never make fun of Australians. Just about everything in their country is lethal. Next, I suspect that Tesla is going to want an active mine. Or at least one that will be active soon. This means all the risks of competent persons reports and mining permits need to have been dealt with already. And lastly, I don't think Tesla is going to want to go the stock exchange route to buy the likes of Albemarle. I don't even think they would be able to. It would have to be a junior miner. So these are my options based on the criteria listed above. First up is Standard Lithium. They have two assets in the USA, one in Arkansas and the second in a location called Bristol Lake in California. Now both of these are brine mining projects, and neither are yet operational. They have reported a combined capacity of around 50,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalents, and Standard Lithium has around $130 million in cash. But their technical reports indicate that they need around a billion dollars or more to get operational with their mining. 
Standard Lithium's current market cap is around $1.5 billion. So we can assume that this asset will cost Tesla around three to $4 billion in total to acquire, if we take the acquisition premium into account and the capital needed to commence mining. Now this is not my top pick for a bunch of reasons. Firstly, Tesla has already expressed interest in spodamine supplies, indicating an ability to process this. Secondly, Brian's mining is controversial, especially in states dealing with water scarcity issues like California. I suspect Standard Lithium are going to be fighting these kinds of environmental concerns all the time, and Elon has many times indicated the need for sustainable mining. Next is my favorite option, Piedmont Lithium. I have reported on Piedmont Lithium's assets in previous videos, and they are interesting. Piedmont has their own production plans of around 30,000 tons of lithium hydroxide, but it is their spodamine that is likely to be of interest to Tesla. In fact, Piedmont is already contracted to supply 75,000 tons of the stuff to them each year. This may seem like a lot, but in reality it is only around 9,000 tons of lithium hydroxide, if my math is correct. But Piedmont Lithium is capable of producing up to 500,000 tons of spodamine. If we look at all their assets combined, like Soyona and the Atlantic Lithium projects in Ghana, this is a much bigger deal that will equate to around 60,000 tons of lithium hydroxide. Piedmont is also short of cash to develop their mine, so they also seem like a good takeover target. They need a stated $850 million to develop their mine and have a market cap of around $1.5 billion. So I think Tesla would get change on a $5 billion check if they made a move on this company and funded the build. Now let's have a look at Lithium Americas. They are trying to mine Thacker Pass in Nevada. This operation is pretty close to Tesla's own ambitions of lithium extraction from clay. It might be that Tesla would be interested in whatever technology Lithium Americas is planning to use, but this seems unlikely in my opinion. Tesla seems pretty confident in their own clay extraction patents, and they don't need any more land in Nevada. More importantly, they have the pesky federal lawsuit to deal with, as the project has been tied up in courts for years due to sacred land claims. Lithium Americas does bring two additional assets to the table, two brine mines in Argentina that are at late stages of development. But if brine's mining was on Tesla's radar, then there are better quality options in Latin America especially Livent, which I have also covered at length in previous videos. Lithium Americas comes at a lofty $5 billion in market cap, and they have around $500 million in cash, which will get them to phase one of the Thacker Pass project, but they still need funds to complete their Argentina projects. I think Lithium Americas would set Tesla back around $12 billion or so, if they were to make a move. Still not really a problem for a company with $17 billion in cash, but not the best value, I don't think. Lastly, there are two Canadian options for Tesla to consider. The first are the two Sayona projects in Quebec, both owned by Sayona Mining in Australia. These are at quite advanced stages of development, but I think Tesla can get a 25% stake in this project simply by buying Piedmont, and they'll get a useful offtake agreement. Also, I suspect that Canada will likely block a sale of these assets, since Canada has stated intentions of developing its own battery EV industry, and raw materials will be crucial to its success. We also have Livens Namaska project, also in Quebec. This is actually an active mine that went bankrupt during a time when LCEs were trading at $8,000 per tonne. But this arrangement is messy. Livent is actually in partnership with Pellinghurst, and they together only have a 50% controlling interest. So Tesla will have too many partners to deal with if intended to vertically integrate and not sell the mining product at a profit. In summary, my bet is that Piedmont is going to be getting a call from Tesla lawyers soon, if they haven't already. But maybe I'm wrong about possible Australian options. Tesla clearly is talking to Liontown. I just think that for this company, there are so many other stakeholders to manage, like the LG offtake agreement and the native title holder support that is needed. I can't think they would be too happy relinquishing control of a proverbial gold mine to a company that does not intend selling the product at a profit. So Piedmont it is. And if you want to learn more about this operation, then I recommend this video of mine here. Also, if you haven't done so already, could you please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel? It goes a long way to supporting me and enabling me to continue to post content. Thank you so much for listening.